Can you survive on only what you can grow, fish, or forage for an entire month? What's up guys, it's Kevin from Epic Gardening. That's the question we're talking about in today's video. I am announcing the Apocalypse Grow Challenge. I, for some reason, love thinking about these post-apocalyptic scenarios, and I've decided as a gardener, I'm basically in. Like, I would do fine, even if I couldn't fight very well, even if I wasn't, you know, the most, I don't know, warrior class type person, I could grow food. And that's valuable, especially in today's society. Almost no one knows how to do this. But I said, you know what, let's try and test this. Can I actually do this in a fake scenario, right? So the Apocalypse Grow Challenge, here is what's going on. It's gonna be in the month of June, June 1st to June 30th. I'm going to be surviving off growing my own food, eating my own food, fishing a little bit, I'm not really a good fisherman, so that's not going to really help me that much, and foraging around here in San Diego. Now I have a couple things in the challenge that I'd like to run by you guys, so I would love your feedback. But first of all, let's go ahead and bust out the whiteboard and do some basic back of the napkin math, and then I'm gonna take you on a tour through the different areas where I'm gonna be growing and my individual strategies for each section of my garden. So the first thing we have to talk about are the general rules. It's going from June 1st to June 30th. I will only be allowed to eat things that I have gardened, fished, foraged, and potentially bartered. This is a rule that I'm curious your feedback on. I am allowed to preserve food grown prior to June as long as I did it myself, as long as I grew that food. I'm allowed to barter for food others have produced at fair market value. That means I cannot just go and barter for a pizza. I have to go, if I wanna barter for eggs, I need to trade something I've grown for equivalent value to those eggs. So, please comment down below, let me know what you think of the actual rule set, but what's going on with actually the strategy itself? So, first of all, we have to just make sure I'm not gonna actually die, right? So, first of all, here's my height. I'm six foot four. Six, four. My weight is around 225 pounds right now. 225 LB. Okay, those are my baselines. My caloric intake per day to remain at my current weight, which I have a little bit of pounds to lose, I'll be honest with you, I could lose some weight, but it's somewhere around 2,000 calories. That means I need to grow around 60,000 calories from this source here, so I can fish, garden, forage, barter, around this many calories. The way I'm thinking about this is I need to grow calories, but I also need to grow nutrients. So in the calories section of the plants I'm gonna be growing, you've got things like potatoes. I have three different types of potatoes that I'm gonna be growing. You've got beans, right? You've got peas, things like this. Those are gonna be calorically dense foods they still have some nutrition, of course, but they're not gonna be as nutrient dense as some of the other stuff I'm growing. So I also need to grow things that are nutrient dense, right? Nutrient dense. So that means things like leafy greens, uh, things like spinach, like uh, all of these really nutrient dense, dark green vegetables that are really going to be feeding me all the nutrients that I need. And also they're quick to grow. Things like kale, for example. This is the basic strategy that I'm employing. Most of my gardening space is gonna to have to be dedicated to the caloric side because, you know, potatoes take a decent amount of space, so do beans and peas. Nutrients, however, what you're gonna see is I'm gonna be able to cram these into really efficient growing systems. Okay, let's talk about the other two pieces of the puzzle, which shouldn't take up too much of my time, but they are a piece of it, right? So foraging, I can forage and as long as I'm foraging things that are able to be foraged, like legally I can do that, then it's gonna be fine. I'm gonna be looking for things like nasturtium. I'm gonna be looking for things like mallow. That's around my area. There are basically prickly pears or tunas. Those are two edible fruits of cactus that I can do. That's in the area. There's not a ton and I'm not that good at foraging. So this is gonna be some of the stuff I'm looking for on the foraging side. Fishing, again, I'm not very good at it. I'm probably gonna to try to do highly efficient fishing. So mackerel on something called a sabiki rig, which is basically like a line that has a bunch of hooks like this, and you kind of drop it in the water, pull it up, 
and you've got a bunch of mackerel on your line. Maybe I'll salt the mackerel and do some sort of preservation technique there. If I can, I'm also going to do some spear fishing and I'm also going to do some surf fishing. Um, Ideally, I don't want this to take up a ton of time because again, that could take up like a whole day and I maybe I don't even catch anything because I'm not that good at fishing. So foraging and fishing, the only other one we haven't really discussed is the bartering. Bartering is probably going to be uh, for things that are absolutely essential that I certainly can't produce, but I definitely need to consume. I'm thinking I might barter some like potatoes for eggs. You know, I, I might barter for like eggs and oils as long as it's been produced by that person. So. That's what I'm thinking about for these non-gardening elements to the challenge. So those are the basic rules of the challenge. That's my basic overview of the strategy. If you see any flaws in it, please definitely let me know. The thing is, I should survive regardless because I know how to grow potatoes, I know how to grow leafy greens, and I can fish well enough to provide myself with some extra proteins and fats that might be missing otherwise from the diet that I've, I've decided to grow. Now, a couple other things that I'm mulling over in my head. Should I go hardcore mode and not even be able to use my own salt? I have to make my own salt, which is actually not that hard. Do, should I have to make my own oil? If that's the case, that's going to change things because I don't really have a foraged source of something I can turn into oil, or I, can, I don't really think I can grow something that I can process into oil effectively or efficiently. I may have to opt to barter potentially for something I can turn into oil. So please let me know what you think about that. But what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna walk you around my property as well as some other areas where I've been able to grow for this challenge and I'm gonna talk about exactly what I plan to do in each of them. All right, so this is the Eco Garden Systems raised bed. It's very raised, I'm 6'4", and it's right up here near my elbow, which is really easy for me to personally work in. And so effectively, this is in my side yard, and that means it gets about partial sun throughout the day, maybe four to five hours direct, which means I pretty much am limited to things that don't flower or fruit. I'm gonna be growing a lot of leafy greens in here. You can already see there's a healthy amount of leafy greens that I'm gonna be harvesting in a cut and gum again style method, which I have a video on how to do that. Um, and it's probably gonna be my salad bed. I've got some root crops in here as well, but it's just making use of some extra space that doesn't get full sun and just trying to squeeze out as much production as I can for this challenge. So for this challenge, what's really important are two major things. I need to have enough calories to actually thrive in this month, and I actually need to have nutrient dense food. It's gonna be difficult for me to solve both of those problems at the same time with the exact same plant. So what I've decided to do is employ a hydroponic system this is the aponic system. I've had a video on my channel about it before. It's effectively a vertical barrel. A lot of you may have heard of the tower garden. I've also done videos on that. This is, in my view, an improved design on the tower garden. 54 different growing sites. And what I'll do is I'll divide 54 by four and I'll plant on schedule so that every week I can effectively harvest an entire section of this. So I'm gonna be going for basically on the USDA's list of highest nutrient density greens, things like watercress, things like kale, things like spinach. These are going to be my salads, maybe even doing some juicing. And so it's gonna be really exciting as I show you guys, you know, not only can you do this in soil, but you can do this in a hydroponic system as well. And it's, it's just making use of the options that you have. I fortunately have the ability to do both, um, but I'm, I'm gonna try to max it out. I would much rather have more food that I know what to do with during this time period than less food. My stomach's rumbling, I'm not a happy human being, and I just am failing the challenge. So here we are in the front yard. This is the main area of the garden. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I'm going to have 11 beds here. Most of these are 12 square feet. So 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12. I don't know what that one is. There's 20 right there, and then probably another 20 right there. So over 100 square feet, probably closer to 150 square feet. These four beds are gonna be mostly my caloric production. So potatoes, beans, plants like that that are providing the actual 
you know, some protein, some sustenance, some actual caloric density, because this gets most of the sun. This is south facing right here. These four beds are gonna be getting the absolute most love. The rest of these over here also as well. I'm gonna take you around the rest of this just to show you a couple other bonuses that are going on in the front yard. So what's really nice about this challenge timing is the loquat tree in my front yard is actually fruiting right now. You can see this is just one branch. It's overloaded with fruit. I'm gonna be able to save and potentially preserve, dehydrate, etc. these for the challenge as per the rules. And then you can see back here, some of these beds are quite sizable. I think 20 square feet in the bed right up against the house. But of course, right up against the house is gonna get the least amount of sun. So I'm gonna do what I can there. And I may even do a trellis that sort of goes outwards and tries to capture a little bit more sun and do some sort of pea or pole bean action like that. Because I have so much green production going on in the side yard, I don't think I necessarily need to have it in the uh, wall bed right here. So I'm gonna see what I can do. If you guys have suggestions on what to do in that wall bed that still gets maybe five to six hours of sun, but not certainly direct sun, I would love to know. So let me know in the comments down below. So here we are at the secondary plot. This is gonna be where most of the root crops are gonna be grown. I put this in with a friend of mine. We did this terraced little approach here because it's on this pretty gnarly slope and there's just no way to prevent erosion and, and runoff. We didn't do that. So we've got one, two, three, four, potentially five different terraced spots. I'm gonna do a ton of potatoes in these beds. Let's go ahead and take a look at the soil quality here, and then I'll walk you around the rest of this property because there might be some cool uh, wild edibles, potential like urban foraging stuff that I can do here too for the challenge. As you can see, Really cool terrace design. I don't know the exact square footage just because it's kind of hard to calculate on a curve and do all that, but there should be at least 100 feet worth of a potato row. And the distance between terrace to terrace here is probably enough for one potato. I can't really put two next to each other, but I can space them maybe about 18 inches apart or so, 12 to 18 inches apart, get quite a bit of yield out of this for relatively low effort. I'm gonna have to analyze the soil, rehabilitate it a little bit. We've definitely gone through a bit of a stale seed bed style technique where we've let weeds come up, killed them off, let them come up, kill them off, let them come up, kill them off a couple times. So it should be pretty low in weed pressure while the soil should be relatively well amended. So let's go ahead and walk around the plot. As you can see, there's already some edible weeds coming up. We've got wild nasturtium here. And, um, you know, I could, I guess, eat this if I wanted to. It's growing naturally right here, but I'm going to rehab these beds. We can take a look at the soil here. Decent soil. It's been amended a couple times, maybe a little clay heavy. So I'm probably gonna have to add some soil conditioner or something like that just to lighten it up a little bit. But we have this entire row right here. Then this one, this one, and this one, and this one. Up here, my friend's actually growing some artichokes, which I will not be consuming for the challenge because I did not grow them. And then over here, you can see we've got more nasturtiums popping out. And then what's actually really interesting is this entire portion of his home is effectively like a native wildflower slash pollinator bed, or hill, I guess you can call it. And there's quite a bit here that we could potentially rework for the challenge. But I think the main feature, again, it's gonna be those terraces right there. So now we're in the epic garden shed. As you can see, I've got a lot of starts potted up. These were ones that were in smaller ones that I've now potted up to about a three or four inch pot. And so this section for the challenge is going to be either seed starting or microgreens. I can pump out a ton of microgreens in the system. I've got a next light veg aid up here. I could even throw it on a mover or I could start employing some of the other lights that I have here. I could go microgreens for days, guys. So if need be, I can mobilize the microgreen section of the garden very quickly or I can con continue to use it for seed starting. It's really up to me. Would be curious to know what you guys think. And as always, I do have a bunch of microgreens videos on the channel. So this at the very least will be the seed starting section for the challenge. Well, that's it for now, guys. That's the overview of the Apocalypse Grow Challenge. Something I kind of cooked up this year on a whim. So it's a definitely a tight timeline and it's not something I've ever done before. So would love to know what you think about it. What do you think about the rules? Do you think they're a little too easy? How do you think I'm gonna do on this challenge? I'm curious because I don't really even know exactly how I'm gonna do on this challenge. And if anyone wants to join me, 
definitely join me. I mean, on Instagram, I'm probably gonna be posting quite a bit about it. I'll use the hashtag Apocalypse Grow. If anyone wants to join me on that, I would love to have some company on this challenge as I battle the elements and I battle Mother Nature, more like cooperate with Mother Nature, to be honest, to try to survive. And honestly, I'm pretty sure it's gonna be like the healthiest eating I've ever had in my life for a 30 day span, potentially besides like being an actual child and like nursing. <laughs> so definitely let me know what you think guys. Good luck in the garden, keep growing, and I will see you on the next video, unless I die. <laughs> All right, peace out.